wow, this codex is the cheesiest thing ever. Uh, you thought I meant the old codex. No, this one. It's really cheesy. And we're going to make you take advantage of every last bite of cheese in this codex. And today's episode is going to be the elites. Oh, we love the elites. They give us such good stuff. Not really like one good thing. But we're going to tell you why. Because you probably don't believe me. First elite choice. We have the death marks. Oh, the joyous death marks. How the FAQ has helped us so. There's really only one way to use these guys. And that is the combo known as death and despair. What this means is you take a royal court that has a, what are they called, despair text? That's what the fancy kids are calling them these days. And that means that they get this really cool flamethrower, which is strength 8, AP 1, but oh, it only wounds against leadership. That's what the cryptic has, which means you can wound most stuff on a 5 or a 6. However, death marks have this awesome rule called hunters from hyperspace, which means you mark a unit and the death mark unit automatically wounds it on a 2 up. However, this also means that the Cryptex staff, who if you take him with the death marks, also wounds on a 2 up. So strength 8 AP1 flamethrower that wounds everything on a 2 up in the unit that you're shooting at that was marked by death marks. Which if you're smart, you probably marked like terminators or something like that, something fancy. And it's really the only good way to use them. They have sniper weaponry, but it's really not anything fancy, it's just a sniper. Um, there are slightly better elite choices, but not really, they're one of like the second most useful, I think, in my personal opinion. You can take them if you want, I would not really recommend them, I think there's more useful stuff out there. Next we have the Lich Guard, the so-called elite Necron close combat unit by the Codex of Standards. These guys are expensive, coming in at 40 points base, however they only come standard with a War Scythe, which means their toughest five guys that will walk across the board at an incredibly slow pace our initiative 2, so all your fancy GK power, power weapons can hit them in first and close combat and don't have an invulnerable save. Which means you have to buy the combo known as Sword and Board, which gives them a hyperface sword and a dispersion shield. The dispersion shield is fancy, it's a 4 up invulnerable, it makes them a little bit more survivable when they're getting nailed by last cannons or punched in the face by power fist. And it has some fancy role where you can redirect shots, but no one ever uses that, it never really comes into play. In my opinion, they are too expensive for what they do. Only having two attack space at such a low initiative does not make them worth their cost. Strength 5 is nice, and Toughness 5 is also nice, but you really need some, like, Overlord with, like, Resurrection Orb and, like, you know what it's called, Phase Shifter to take last cannon shots for them. Just make them a little bit better. Next we have the Triarch Beatorians. These guys are okay. It really depends on what kind of list you have here. If you have someone like Imatech with them, they're great because they can be under the cover of night fighting while they jump around. The downside is their so-called elite close combat unit that jumps at people with their war sights only has one attack, base. I was very disappointed too. They're also very expensive, and their normal war gear is a Rod of the Covenant, which is not even a power weapon. It's a strength, I think, 5 AP1 6-inch shot weapon that if they're really that close to you, they can shoot you with. But it's one attack without a power weapon. Honestly, why why would anyone take these guys if they really like them that much, I suppose? You can exchange a Rod of the Covenant for a Void Blade and a Particle Caster, and it gives them an extra attack because you have two close combat weapons, but Void Blade is also not a power weapon, and it's just a rending thing, which is still really not that good. Even though they're Toughness 5 and Strength 5, I'd much rather have a War Scythe or at least a Hyper Face Sword. Games Workshop, why couldn't you give them a Hyper Face Sword? They would be so good. And that's really the Praetorians. I wouldn't take them either. They're just Necron Elite CC units aren't really what they should be. Next we have the Catan Shard. Okay, these guys, these guys are interesting. You can give them a whole bunch of stuff and you can customize, customize them any way that you want to, depending on your style of play. You can give them the dreaded Writhing Worldscape combo with Oricon the Divider, which if you watched the last video, which you should have, you know what that does. You can also give them all this other fancy stuff like Lord of Fire and Entropic Touch, but it's not really necessary for this big dude. And anybody who played the old Codex and hasn't picked up this one yet, they're going to be disappointed with the Catan, because they're actually really darn easy to kill, though. They're strength 7, only toughness 7, though, so Bolters can kill the crap out of him. Orcs can kill the crap out of him. It has happened to me. It's not fun. It's really sad. You can also make them shooty. You can give them, like, a big blast template and, like, an 8-shot, like, rock gun. He's Ballistic Skill 2, two. Ballistic Skill 5, he hits on 2s. It'll make him pretty decent, like, but it's, it's a lot of points. He's 185 points base, that's before he takes 2 upgrades, which he has to take. If you didn't have
have to take the upgrades, I might like try and find some crazy way to fit in three of them just for 185 points each. Just so I have a bunch of Toughness 7 guys running at you with like their big slashy fist or whatever the hell they use to kill people. Honestly, from a competitive standpoint, you could take one if you wanted to. I have one on my 1850 list that I just threw in recently just because I think they're really funny. Because, you know, they see them and they think of the old codex and they're like, oh, and then I tell them their stat line and they're like, oh. But they're distractions. And if you have a list with a lot of really valuable shooting units like destroyers or triarch stalkers or any type of like big Death Star of Lances that you want to shoot at people, the Catan will take most of that high powered, low AP firepower for you because he's a big scary model and people think like, oh my god, it's a living god, let's shoot it to hell. And when it does die, now all of your shooting is still alive and can absolutely wreck their entire army. That is how I intend to use him when I get to play test my new list against someone who's actually good. No offense to the last person I played, if you read this or watch this, you, you understand. You know who you are. Next elites, Flayed One Pack. No. Nope, not taking them. No. I, I know you're thinking about it. Oh, they have three attack space. No, you are not taking these guys. Just no. Elites, Triarch Stalker. These guys are pretty funny. I actually like them. The, the reason you take these guys is because of their special ability called, what is it, Targeting Relay. Any unit that this thing hits, not wounds or kills, at least hits once, the rest of your army becomes twin-linked if they shoot at that same unit. Which means if you run the one of the fancy lists that has a whole bunch of lances in it, and a Triarch Stalker tags like a Rhino or something, or a unit of like Terminators or Paladins, all of your lances or anything else that shoots at it, if it's a unit that you really want to kill, is twin-linked. Which means your warriors, if you have that relentless blob of rapid-fire goodness we were talking about earlier, get some rapid-fire range, it's now 40 twin-link shots. I approve of that. The only problem is his standard war gear is a multi-melta, which is two shots, however it is only 24-inch range, which means he has to be pretty close to them in order to use it. A remedy to this is an upgrade called Twin-Linked Heavy Gauss Cannon for 15 points. It gives him a Twin-Linked Heavy Gauss Cannon, pretty self-explanatory, which has a higher range than the multi melto so you can keep him in the back just tagging stuff for your rest of your army to shoot the crap out of. However, I personally like the multi melta just because it's the only access to melta that we have, and who doesn't love anti-tank? I love anti-tank. And he benefits from quantum shielding. It even has a rear armor 11 for some strange reason. So front and side is 13 until he gets penned, which makes him really hard to kill. He has move through cover, and he's strength 7, so he can actually kill a vehicle if he gets to assault it. It's pretty funny. And he also can take a particle shredder. Don't take this. I don't care if you're going against Horde. Just don't take it. Just use the melt and turn it into a flamethrower. The biggest downside to these guys, aside from being open top, is that they only have one weapon. And that is whatever weapon you choose to give the upgrade to if you choose to give him a Gauss Cannon or Particle Shredder. Which means if he gets a weapon destroyed result on him, he is now completely useless. His big ability to twin link stuff is now gone. And all you can really use him for is just to tie up units that can't hurt an armor 13 walker. Which I've done before. I'll tie up, like, I don't know. What sword army was it? Like a Space Wolf uh, Rune Priest? Yeah, it's really funny. It's like he was Jaws of the World Wolfing All My Immortals. He's now in combat with the Triad Stalker for the next three turns. Have fun with that. And those are really all the elites. It's some good, some bad. My personal favorite out of all of them is the Triarch Stalker. Second would probably be the Catan. Third is the Death Marks. Lich Guard Praetorian and then Flayed Ones. I'm sorry, you really should not be taking these guys. If you want to have fun, go for it. You can take your Lich Guard Praetorians. You can even take your Flayed Ones. Ooh. But, I mean, who has fun playing this game? You gotta win, right? That's why you're watching these videos! Ugh. So that's the elites. Next time we're going to go over the troops, because you know we have so many troops in our codex. So click the link on your screen, which will probably be around here, or here, or here, or if you really are too lazy to do that, look in the sidebar for the video, and it'll be somewhere over there next to all the random suggestions YouTube gives you, probably like that creepy stuff you 